So at the time of making this video, it's been exactly one month and four days since I started this project of making the most complex animation and modeling app for Android devices and maybe iOS as well. And I think it's fair to say for a time frame of one month we have actually made a lot of progress and in this video I'll be showing you what I've been up to for the past one week and four days. So the first thing I did was to break the render engine in a futile attempt to get it to render faster with better results. And it didn't seem to go as planned but at the same time renders like this might actually be useful to some people. But I didn't feel like making an entire interface to activate it so regardless of how weirdly good looking it might be it had to go. And then in the process of removing it I managed to achieve a more stylized shadow type well it still had to go because it kind of makes the performance worse and even though I could make this optional, I chose not to. And just like that, we successfully wasted the first day. So the next major step for me was to add in some materials as we could clearly see how bad materials looked in the previous video. So I just whooped in some quick material settings and light settings to also go with it. And just like that, we could change material colors from inside the app. And when I tested it, it was looking alright and I added in a normal depth. Normally, that was supposed to be a metallic value, but at this point, it was kind of making things look more like graphite than metal. And then I went back to making the render engine a little more optimized to make a system that blows shadow instead of calculating each pixel. Although it didn't work the first time, it got even worse the second time. And I'm not gonna lie, the blood shadow didn't didn't look as good as I expected. But yet in that exact moment I started getting some bright ideas. Since we've already made a system that can blur pixels, why not just use that for objects that are far away? And as you can clearly see, the shadow optimizers may not have worked for shadows but they were perfect for background blur. And as expected, they also worked perfectly for blurring out details on models, not just high poly but low poly as well. Personally, I don't see why you need to blur out details on high poly models but for low poly models, it works like a charm. So I guess that's one feature that might actually stick around for a while. And after I got this to work, I actually went to go take a break because what I had in mind to do next was not going to be easy. Well, a lot of people won't actually expect this to be a challenge because they'll assume if you can get one of the lights to work, you can easily just copy that for the other, but it's never that simple. Well, it is simple actually, but before you arrive at that simple solution, it is a very inconvenient process. And you can probably see what I'm talking about. So I decided this method of rendering wasn't worth it so I tore down the entire system to start from the top and the fact that the common area was finally getting brighter was a good sign that the system was cooperating and finally I used it in an actual render and it worked and to me it was one of those fall out of your chair in excitement moments and finally our renders were getting better with time and compared to what I just pulled off, colored lights was actually very easy and finally being able to put multiple lights in a single scene actually boosted the renders tenfold. So I decided to take a quick render to test out most of the rendering features that we have in the app currently. And personally, I can't really call this breathtaking but it was really cool, especially with the rendering variations that we had in the app. And the realistic side of things was getting better as well but we didn't really have any textures to add. And right now, the only thing I was doing was just testing out the render, the new render engine and the lighting system to see what it could do. And at this point, I was really glad I decided to add in the multiple lights when I did because if I had started reflections and other systems, I would have had to swap that all out to just add multiple light. But in all, our render engine was looking good. And basically, it's pretty obvious that normal maps and textures will make things look more realistic. But I started Unity just a month ago and I'm not very good at it yet. So after a long break and a couple of tutorials, I finally found something that might help and it helped. And at this point I had finally discovered the secret of unity texturing and what you are actually seeing 
is a procedurally generated texture and since it's not an actual image it won't take up CPU memory or anything and what I had just stumbled upon was actually going to change the entire system when it comes to texturing, texture painting, material nodes and even UV mapping but for now I was just playing around with the procedural textures because the possibilities were really interesting and I could actually make more coordinated patterns by casting the render as a texture and then we had the classic noise texture and it was at this point I leaned forward and I was convinced I was onto something and I was finally ready to move on to modeling and from there I could walk my way back to UV wrapping and if this video gets like 40 likes we'll go for another week.